so it as i was getting used to the clientele or they were getting used to me i had to have a fairly long conversation going through this but what i did was i would say here's how i like to work and it's kind of hard for you if you're used to leaving here perfect i like to put on the wax and just wax and i don't like to tweeze and this is the reason why i'd like it to be so you have no short hairs growing in between your waxing appointments and what that means is when you leave today you're not going to be perfect so I want you to come in in two weeks and then in three weeks and then in four weeks and every four weeks from then on and I don't want you to do any tweezing at home do you think you can do that so I would literally just outline it and then ask the customer do you think you can do that no oh. I would say all of my customers did they just did and this is what happened they ended up about three four waxings into it where they said this is actually better because I am less hairy in between my appointments so again I'm going to tell you it's not that the tweezing breaks off the hair tweezing pulls the hair out by the root but if you really want to wax then you want the hair to be all long enough to be pulled out by the wax the only way that that happens if you if you stop tweezing does everybody understand what I'm saying I mean I know that there's a lot of you that are in there thinking oh hell no not gonna do it I couldn't possibly have my customers leave with hair but if you have a conversation with them you might be able to actually get them into a 90 second brow wax instead of a 90 second 15 minute tweeze and that's my thing the other part of that is if you're not going to do that then are you charging for the tweezing and mostly people don't mostly beauty therapists will have a wax price and they won't have an additional price for tweezing and it takes much longer if you're going to tweeze and never ever pick up tweezers to do any body waxing never ever okay so if you're truly a perfectionist and you have this tendency to get your mag light out and start going over the legs put the mag lamp away put the tweezers down and walk away do you guys do that you can always tell They're like oh gosh she knows okay you're not being paid to do that and if you just wax everything the hair will all come out it will you have to trust the process so will it make the hair grow back thicker stronger darker well you know don't bald men wish that we could stimulate hair the reality is is that only hormonal changes makes hair grow and it doesn't matter if it's natural hormones or steroids and people will be on something like pregnisone which is a steroid for rheumatoid arthritis or some health problems and it can alter the hair growth so whether it's artificial hormones or natural hormones it's when your body hair changes so as we go through puberty we get body hair as we go through menopause we get facial hair and as men go through puberty they get facial and body hair so it's not the shaving waxing tweezing that makes the hair grow it's life and genetics that makes your hair grow okay a lot of times people and I say end users are concerned that if they start to remove the hair on their upper lip that they're going to end up with a mustache of course sometimes you know I'm not the only one that sits here and thinks it's already a mustache man you might as well let me wax it <laughs> so really understand that the waxing will not stimulate the hair growth it is puberty that's made it happen and many many times people think that their hair started growing when they started shaving not realizing that their hair was growing that's why they started shaving okay so does it hurt we handled the most the first time if you don't get them back in four weeks it will hurt all over again if you have a customer that comes in every eight weeks it's like a virgin wax every single time the breakout thing that will get better if they come in every four weeks if I've had customers that have said I have tried to wax and I always break out well how long did you wax a long time like 10 years and how many times a year did you wax well probably four or five times because I always broke out 
you really have to get your client in there every four weeks for their skin to get acclimated to the waxing service and to stop breaking out. So they will break out every single time if they're only in every three or four months, but they will stop breaking out if they come in every, every four weeks. Will it make the hair go back thicker, stronger, darker? No. And how long does it last? Four weeks. But it lasts four weeks as long as you educate them and they get in every four weeks, okay? So you know how to have a conversation with your customers. Now, professionally, professional things. There we go. Um, one of the things that I think, yes. Hold on one second. Okay, the question is what about ingrown hair? Do I pull them out? No. I don't. If a customer has ingrown hairs, they have to use home care. They have to use they have to use home care. Okay. Okay. I don't sit there and tweeze them out. No. As gratifying as that is, that's not what they're paying us to do. But if they <laughs> if they come in regularly every four weeks, would that reduce the incidence of ingrowing hair? It reduces think? everything. Now, if somebody gets ingrowns from shaving, they're going to get ingrowns from waxing. And you have the tight curly hair that has a tendency to get ingrown, and then you have the quite coarse straight hair that has a tendency to ingrow. Uh, on the legs, you can see it mm -hmm. right underneath yeah. the skin. And exfoliation really, really helps, and then regular waxing really helps. I have found that when I have, when I have somebody that, like if I have somebody that has bumps and has problems with waxing, that if they come in every fourth Thursday at 10 o'clock, I have a much better response than four and a half weeks, five weeks, three weeks, four. To me, it's really, really critical that they come in exactly on a schedule. It makes everything we do better. So, okay. Are there any other questions at this point? One moment. Thank you. You mentioned about doing your consultation. Obviously, what you've got here is your full consultation. If when your repeat clients come in four weeks time, then you what turn, do you do then? Then you turn to the back of the sheet. Yeah. And you say, okay, so. The client recap is like a declaration. I declare that my skin care routine and medications have not changed. And you can just simply ask, has anything in the last month changed in what you're doing on your skin or any other medications? And again, because I'm from California and everybody sues each other, they sign it every time. Yeah. So you do have a shortened sort of uh, It's version. just the back of the yeah. sheet. And then yeah. they just sign it and date it. Yeah. So you have an ongoing thing. I mean, whether you can say that that's for legal purposes or professional purposes, for you to know that nothing has changed, it accomplishes the same thing. Okay? Okay, so, professional. One of the things that I think professionals do wrong is they have a fixed price on their waxing services, and we have everything from a hairless person to the Yeti. The missing link. It's not ape, it's not man, and it wants a Brazilian. I'm gonna have to do a little tweezing here, okay? Um, there's two ways to work your prices for waxing. When I had my salon and there were only two of us there, I had what I called a range. And I never said and up, I said half leg, which is above the knee and down, from 25, I'm talking US, from 25 to $40. And this way, if they had hairy feet and toes, I just waxed them. You really never want to ask a customer, did you want your feet and toes done as well? No, I think hairy feet and toes looks really, really good <laughs> with clean legs. It's a good look. Of course they do. But you also have to charge for it. So instead of saying, did you want your feet and toes done, and that'll be five more dollars. You have your prices to encompass everything. 